Hey, we're going to get going here this week. And, uh, you know, we've talked uh, over the last three, four months, expect this high volatility to continue. And that, that is what is going on. The big change that we've seen though recently is that volatility has been more on a downswing in the market compared to this past winter when it was more on an upswing. Um, we don't, we don't like to go back on things too much as this is the futures market. But the first slide we want to show you here is one that, one that we did back in mid-June, okay? And, and we had in there, how much can this market really swing? And we put on there a baseline of $7 corn, $15 beans, $11 wheat. The market was a little bit higher than that at that point, but our whole point was is looking at a 10, 20, or 30% move. And at that point, if you looked at a 30% break, if I go over to the wheat market from $11, that would project to move down to $770. That's near where that, that low was put at here this past week. So, you know, the one thing we really try to prepare ourselves for is a lot of volatilities are moving forward. It's not only the grain markets that have been moving a lot, but as we looked at some outside markets as well, we've seen some major, major moves. The first chart we have in front of here is, is heating oil futures, or you might as well relate to it as diesel fuel. As you can see from the summer high to this week's low in here, we have heating oil dropping off around 20%. On our next chart, we're looking at the copper market. Copper market has had a big break from its contract highs in here this spring, dropping more than 30% to this week's lows. The copper market is one where we've seen one of the bigger drop-offs in this market. Our next chart, and we've highlighted this one a number of times over the winter months, is the lumber market. As you can see here, lumber futures have dropped off around 40%. Looking at an ag market, the cotton market peaked out in mid-May, and now after this last week, we're sitting around 35% off of this recent break. Therefore, when we take a step back and we just look at some broad outside markets, whether if it's on the energy side of it or metals, even getting over to the softs in here, we've seen some major breaks in this market. Now, as we get towards the grain trade, what do we have going on now? We've got December Chicago wheat that traded to a high of 1250. Now it's down around eight bucks. That's a 35% break, similar to what we've seen in some of these other markets. With U.S. wheat prices now competitive on the world market, we're hopefully going to find a base in here right now. As I look towards a corn chart, I put that red line on the bottom at 540, as that would be a 30% break from the contract high. I'm not saying we're heading down to this 540 level, but if the 575, 580 area of support is taken out, that 540 would be a logical target. Our thinking right now is when you have money outflow in here, if we can't hype up some weather, this market could just leak a little bit lower. We're not bearish in here at 575 corn or 580 corn, but on the other hand, you need a bullish spark for us to move higher. The last chart we have here is November soybeans, and this is our big concern sitting here right now, is that red line down below is at 1110. That's a 30% break from the contract highs here that we saw in June. So if we correlate the bean market to other markets, whether if it's copper or heating oil, heck, you can even put the, 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 the crude oil market or precious metals in here. The beans are one where it has, has not broken nearly as much as we've seen in other markets. That's where if the support levels are taken out, this is a market that could be a little more vulnerable. We're not saying prices are heading down to these points, but on the other hand, we need to take a step back and respect what has gone on in other markets. As we want to wrap up here today, the one thing we have to remember is volatility swings both ways. We've seen that firsthand in the bean market in here this week as we traded as much as 40 to 50 higher in here on Monday than traded as much as 40 to 50 lower in here today. This thing is going to continue to swing both ways and be volatile. When it comes down to weather, I mean, we're really 50-50 on here right now. We remind producers who think their crops are looking great that it's not like that all over. In areas that have missed out rain, we need to remind those producers that it's not a complete disaster either. We have to shift probably to a little more of a defensive pattern. And the reason why is looking at the outside markets when you have energy, metals. We know the equity markets are getting a decent bounce today. But yet that market looks like it has peaked out and, and there's some, some concerns about the economy. The next thing is money flow. We really don't have money flow coming into commodities. It's probably more of an outflow in here right now. That makes it difficult to have a bullish move. One last thing, 
markets always much more move much more than what we'd expect. We'll continue to focus on managing risk. We think a good thing to do is reward rallies. We get strong updates in the market, make some cash sales for producers. Any questions or concerns, give us a call or drop us an email. Have a great day.